Well, first I'll tell you a little bit about our film. Um, we made it 35 years ago, and um, it was released by a Canadian distribution company. It was released in the United States, and as they were releasing it in theaters, the company was going bankrupt, which we didn't know. And so it opened in a few cities in kind of weird theaters, and right after that the company went bankrupt and they had sold the video rights to a company which just about the time that the video came out was acquired by a major studio who really didn't care about small independent films and they just released the video and walked away um, and so the film really just disappeared 35 years ago as it was being released and in the process, the materials all got sent around to laboratories or whatever, and it was our first film, and um, we didn't really think about it. And, and, and when you make your first film, you're usually not thinking about this laboratory or about those still photographs or anything. You're just so happy to be making a film. And when it's being released, it's like such an assault because you've never been through this before that when all the materials started scattering, we didn't think about it. And you would never do that now because everything is digitized and it lives in the cloud or it lives someplace. But back in the day when people worked on 35 or 16 millimeter, there was a negative and there were sound elements and they needed to be preserved because it was the only way to duplicate prints. I mean, even the VHS masters were, were really very different from digital technology. And over the years, I just sort of assumed that the film was gone, just completely gone. People, festivals tried to show it, and I didn't even have a, <clears throat> a print to send to a festival. And uh, people said, well, we can take an old VHS and we can make a digital master from it. And I kept thinking, oh, I, I, I don't think so. And then something in the zeitgeist sort of said this was the right time. And coincidentally, in 2019, um, the film program at Japan Society in New York City contacted me and said, we found a print of the film at the Academy Archives. This is the Academy of Ocean Pictures, Arts and Sciences in Los Angeles, and we'd love to show it. Would that be okay with you? And at that point, all the rights had come back to our company. And I said, well, okay, sure. And he said, would you come? And I went, sure. Uh, but I didn't really think very deeply about it. And we went to the screening, and I invited some friends. And it was this incredible revelation to see a film I thought was gone um, and see it again. So it was a very long process. and. Um, the lead actress had passed away from, from cancer about 20 years ago. And it was very bittersweet seeing her performance because it was very sad. I think she was 28 when she passed. So that was also a little painful. Well, we've been really surprised how the audience and the press are responding. Yes. Like 30, we made this 35 years ago. And this movie released in New York, Los Angeles, and we were there to see how audience reaction. But a lot of young people react so much. Now. Yeah, now. <clears throat> and so I asked the audience, why, what point you are interested in? And they said, because this is 1980s Tokyo. And so they said, 1980s Tokyo is so fantasy. Well, now young people were very sounds like very trendy to see to yeah, that is very interesting and they never they never I asked do you feel this is old movie they said no this is very contemporary so interesting uh, I've been communicating with uh, a young woman here in in Edinburgh and um, uh, over a reservation at a restaurant we wanted to go to and um, she said to, to me oh, I'm coming to see the film, and I'm going with my friend, and we're going to eat ramen first, and then we're going to come see the film. And when we made the film, ramen was a cup of noodle. Mm. Uh, there were no ramen stores. There was certainly no gourmet ramen uh, or ramen tastings or anything like that. So in a lot of ways, 
the audience has actually caught up with the film over these years. And um, when we've been seeing it, we were very amused at things that people laughed about because when I first made the film, people didn't even know what these things were, like love hotels and things like that. And the first time I was like, these people know about love hotels? How could that be? But see, <laughs> even you're laughing. That's very, very interesting to me because I didn't realize that everyone all over the world now knows about a lot of the things in, um, in, in Tokyo Pop. Um, I can't say that I was aware of what I had learned when I was making the film, but what I've learned in retrospect is there's a very, at that time, there was a very big difference between making an independent film and making um, an American studio mainstream film. And uh, what I did learn is I like being an independent filmmaker. Our first film festival that we went to was um, I mean, International Film Festival was in 1983, so I guess that's 40 years. Um, and um, we lived by film festivals because we owned a distribution company in Japan and distributed mainly indie films from around the world. Everything from Krzysztof Kieslowski's films to Spike Lee to uh, whatever. Um, and so we love film festivals and we love film festival life, but we haven't been distributing movies for about 15 years. Uh, I think this is maybe one of the first film festivals we've been to in at least 10 or 15 years, uh, it, big international festivals. And when Tokyo Pop was invited and we kind of knew that, that this festival had been going through hard times, we just looked at each other and went, let's go. Uh, so we, here on our own, um, mainly because we wanted to support the festival and, and we're just so honored to be invited. Um, our film story is very much like the Edinburgh Film Festival's story in that it's about revival and it's about not giving up and having patience for 35 years to go out and find all the elements and put our film back together and literally rebuilding it. I was talking about the process of reviving Tokyo Pop and, and the elements all being uh, dispersed. We found the sound in a, in, a, in a major studio's laboratory in London and we found the negative in Los Angeles and had to reconstruct our film which I think is the heart of this film festival as, as I've experienced it being here and from the stories that you've been telling me. So it's an added pleasure to be here and be part of it. And I think that's really kind of the state of being of being an independent filmmaker, an independent festival.